Three, two, one. Hi, everybody. Hello. We're back. Oh, is it oh too you loud? got headphones on. It was peaking. Yeah. Oops. All right. It's all good. <laughs> the recording will be ruined by Garrett Schwackhauser. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Justin Zagri. I'm the writer director of The Great Wizarding War and uh, co writer, because Garrett is a co writer. That's right. I'm Garrett Schwackhauser. I'm the co writer of The Wizarding War and most of the problems going on in Justin's headphones <laughs> at the moment. <laughs> Welcome back to The Wizarding War. Talks. Talks. Back. Wow. Wow. Apparently, oh we're a God. '90s uh, action uh, thriller now. <laughs> yeah, better than '80s. We were '80s like last year, and now yeah. we're into the '90s. Yeah. So this is the good. next one is 2000s, which yes. is too vague to understand. <laughs> it's um, called the aughts, Justin. Don't you read newspapers? <laughs> <laughs> we only we, we usually only have one guest, but because episode four took so long to get done, we thought we'd uh, double it up a little bit. Bam, 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 Two bam. for the price of pew, one. Pew, pew. <laughs> who do we so, got? We have Shannon. Oh, hello. <gasps> Shannon played, uh, who did you play? I played Minetta Radford. <laughs> yes. yes. I right. forgot who you played for some reason. It's <laughs> like I couldn't remember. Oh, that's all right, dear. No, oh. don't worry. <laughs> have a cookie. Have some tea. <laughs> wow, you're so not. Your voice sounds so hauntingly familiar. Oh, you know, just one of those voices. Was I supposed to be doing something? Obliviate. Um, uh, and we have uh, uh, Mr. Jordan King himself. Hello, yes. And he is the only actual wizard in <laughs> oh, the Great no Wizarding way. War. It's why, why? very true. Because you are the sound designer. Yes, yes, yes I am. Can you give us a quick breakdown of what a sound designer's job is? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Alex gets all this praise for all of his pretty music, mm-hmm. and it's mm-hmm. very pretty, Alex. Yeah. But what does a sound designer do? What makes your job in, as important as I know it is? Yeah, I mean, sound design can be a multitude of things, um, and it's a lot like wearing a lot of different hats. Um, but, you know, the main thing is that you're... Oh, yeah, right. I'll tell, uh, just like that, right? <laughs> oh, that hat looks good. That actually looks much better on you. You get a Curve habit belt. now. That's Curve hat belt, yeah. law. Exactly. Uh, right, now. You turn it sideways. Um, but you, um, basically as a sound designer, you, uh, put together all the sounds, um, to create the soundscape and especially in a radio play like this situation, um, everything is all audio, right? You know? So what happens is Justin will edit together all the dialogue and stuff like that. That creates the story. But then if you only have dialogue, you can't really, you know, hear any, uh, actions or things that are going on that you can make up in your head and like radio plays you know they came around back in the 50s when they were actual radio plays mm-hmm. and they had actors on stage and what they do is they would um have little sound device thingies like big shoes that we, they would you know fake clomp around and it would create this soundscape some really good remember, vocabulary yeah. from the sound engineer yeah. i don't yeah. remember I, some, uh, I, I don't remember in the radio plays in the 50s the sound car accident on stage <laughs> i don't remember what little piece they used if they brought in like a 1942 right, and just, just had a, drove it off <laughs> into in the, the front row studio. yeah and they were like oh my god yeah. mom! you know because i feel yeah. like your your sound engineering is like much far be- yeah. yeah i i'm actually crashing cars i don't know if you yeah, know yeah. this i'm I, yeah that's how i'm oh, making if they do the yeah, radio play live then warning to everybody in the first two front rows you might get hit by shrapnel jordan yeah. will be yeah. crashing be vehicle. very aware everybody gets a he- head uh you know helmet so yeah. well, i think it's i think it's a, i'm so glad to have both of you guys on because one i mean i love the character that you've created for monetta radford and bringing this like everyday <laughs> British feeling to the wizarding world which is so fantastical and yet there she is like having a day in the office yes. right. mm-hmm. you know just an everyday for it's her favorite. great totally. and I, I you know I just the sound engineering from you Jordan is literally constructing the world in our heads and making it make sense for us as we listen yeah mm-hmm. so that's you know both of you guys are doing such an a fantastic job mm-hmm. so Thank question you. for you Jordan uh, yeah. when it comes to uh, this uh, doing the radio play mm-hmm. uh, and figuring out the sound. Right. What's the big difference between figuring out sound for no video versus figuring out laying down sound for picture in front of you? Yeah, I mean this is huge, and and this so this is the first radio play that I've kind of been a part of, and so. What's great about video, I'm a very literal person when I watch a video and have to do sound design for it because you get to see, you're like, 
oh, there's a clanging pipe that hits something. It's like, yeah. oh, I know what that's going to sound like. You sound like. designed yeah. on Severus Save and the Marauders. Yeah, exactly. I was, yeah, I I was stuck in stuff. your closet yelling <laughs> no, in pain. <laughs> and I go, yeah, we need more pain, actually. You're like, this yeah. isn't enough. <laughs> but with, I was um, beaten in that closet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> I was stuck in that under. Okay, sorry. <laughs> um, but with radio play, you know, you don't have any visuals, so... All of it really was in my head, and this is where Justin helped a lot too. As I, you know, I asked Justin, I was like, "More notes, more, you know, yeah, give we, me." We kind of got a formula now. Yeah, 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 and it was great because you know Justin gives great direction, and and you know will tell the story of what's happening, and then it, through my own lens, I'll see that in my head, and I'll still use like visual, like I'll think about it, like, all right, so then the werewolf's gonna come in from here, and they gotta hit the wall and break through the glass, and. And then in those situations, you know, that's when I kind of make the movie in my head mm -hmm. and as I'm going along, create the sound design. So I'll just put that in there, listen to it, close my eyes, I'm like, oh, okay, that'll work and mm -hmm. moving things to different places. But yeah, it's yeah. awesome. I think yeah. that's my favorite thing about it is how realistic it makes it. Mm -hmm. Like when the when the police siren goes off in the car mm -hmm. and they and you hear them tur cranking the wheel mm -hmm. and yeah. turning and like yeah. It just comes right into your brain when and the you're police, sitting in the, the cab. The sound of the police siren was from inside the car, mm -hmm. so yeah. it had a little bit of a muffle. Yeah, exactly. Just, I was just like, why is it so mu Oh, because we're inside. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. You have to think. <laughs> I was thinking about a lot of that stuff. I mean, like, situational. what I love about radio play is because, you know, you, you really get inside of, like, where is the listener? You know, mm. I pretend that the listener is the camera, you know, if you're looking yeah. at visual uh, uh. stuff, you know. So, we're going to have fun with that in a future episode. Yes, I know. The, the geography oh, of one of the future yes. episodes is insane. Oh, so we have to figure out some sort of sound cue to make it work. Yeah, 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 yeah it's exactly. It's going to be literally... It's a lot of tricks. Yeah. Insane. Yeah. yeah. I think something else that really stuck out to me was that when, when uh, Remus is on top of the car as a werewolf mm -hmm. and right, you hear crunches. this attack and the mm -hmm. crunches, and yeah. it's not just the sound, really. You start to feel this like claustrophobic mm -hmm. feeling, like you're right sitting right behind mm -hmm. the glass, yeah. like, oh, you know. Yeah. It's really like the emotional, visceral response to that. It mm -hmm. was shocking when I first heard it, and I yeah. thought it was so cool. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. It, yeah, it's fun. It's just uh, with that, you know, it's honestly, those are like kind of the easiest parts to do. Really? Because it's just smash bang. Like that stuff will get you, you know, especially going from low level stuff. There, That's why in that uh, scene, like he gets like three, four big swipes. But in between those swipes, it gets very quiet. Hmm. And then it goes big and that immediately triggers your like... um fight or flight like response because you get like scared you're like yeah. oh loud noise oh i should be running away you oh know? my god yeah so that's so manipulative I love oh that. yeah that's what stories are uh, they're just genius. big manipulations yeah yeah <laughs> so what would you say is probably the most difficult part of sound designing mm -hmm. like uh, oh. what, like the most difficult scene you've sound designed for us so far the werewolf scene <laughs> yeah i want to go into wow. the details of that more yeah, in, in, right. in a minute mm -hmm. okay yeah, totally. yeah for sure but i wanted to talk about your character. Uh -huh. um, I didn't really give you. <laughs> I didn't really give you any direction on how this character should sound. Mm -hmm. I just kind of gave you an idea of her attitude in life. Yeah. Um, and not only has you played her in episode four, which is where she's formally introduced, but now we understand who the person interrogating is. Right. Yeah. So, um, in case anybody didn't catch that, right. you know, <laughs> spoilers. <laughs> um, so, my, so you you came up with a very particular accent and motif and like attitude for this person where uh, talk about how you came up with her it kind of thinking of what you know what you would be like in the day to day of just you know this is your job this is what you do so it, it, you get normalized to it you know maybe in her first few weeks of training when she was super young it was like wow what is this and everything shocked her but now it's just another day in the office and she's just yeah. this go-getter of a woman and she, you know she just knows what she's doing clearly and yeah. it, from the way you wrote her she she kind of leads the band you know so mm -hmm. she's yeah that's her job her, yeah. she's in charge of that particular um uh, incident right and i thought it would be fun because like uh my thought process was this kind of stuff during the wizarding wars probably happened all the time mm -hmm. so there's probably a department that takes care of these issues at the moment they come up mm -hmm. right um and first responders mm -hmm. first responders exactly yeah. nice. so you have people uh actually um a uh what's really fun is um when i first came up with the uh the scene uh 
initially uh, the, the scene called for a large obliviation, and mm-hmm. I was like, well, I got to do it like several blocks wide. Like right. men in black and, style. And, yeah, yes. and I was like, how do I do that? So I came up with a spell called Obliviate Omni, mm-hmm. which means the spell goes in all directions. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Fantastic Beasts came out. Uh, <laughs> yep. And, yep. Um, uh, and they had all of New York get obliviated by swooping evil venom through distribution of rainwater. Right. And I was like, I'm going to do that. <laughs> I'm gonna do, I'm just, we have been saved so many times <laughs> yes. when we're stuck. Yes. And it's like, then this happens, or like on Pottermore, or this is in right. Fantastic yeah. Beasts. We're like, oh, thank God. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so that was a really fun thing to figure out. But what I loved about how you did it is not only like, is it day to day for you, but like, it's really enjoyable. Like yeah. it's really fun. Yeah. She clearly enjoys herself. It was cool. Yeah. It, it just, and, and obviously I wanted to have the contrast to the rest of the scene. You know, there's so much chaos. Yeah. She is, so it's fun to have that where she's just like, oh, it's just another day in the office, darling. Well, that's, yes. I mean, I, w- I want to applaud your performance because that is mm. very smart to do. Like, I, I think some it. people would see that scene where it's like there's a giant werewolf attack and a dog attack and all this crazy stuff happens and right. they would come in and their character would be very like, okay, they're we got to deal with all this stuff. I'm really right. stressed out. And you come in and you're just like a cool breeze. Yeah. Mm. You're yeah, like, we're perfect. doing this, you do that. And it's just, is a great contrast and, yeah. and the cooler the talk scene. too like mm-hmm. that yeah. I, you know yeah. how she's just you know they're just <laughs> shooting the Shreisa bleep word, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't curse the first time. This right. One. <laughs> well, they said, she said like we have only a certain amount of time to get everything repaired so mm-hmm. I needed right. a practical I need a, pra- a moment of practicality where she, we, we hear everything getting uh, fixed from the damage that mm-hmm. was done because you yeah. can't just obliviate them. They're going to be like, how did this happen? Right. Uh, okay. And I thought like coming up with a story Men in Black style was too much. Mm-hmm. So I was just, and I know they can repair things yeah. really yeah. quickly. Oh yeah, very quickly. So I was just like, if they repair things and they obliviate them and they're out, out for the count, I'm like, well, they just talk to each other. Yeah, Because exactly. right, it doesn't what take that long, do? right? You yeah. know, it's one repairo spell and then... Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Huh. yeah. So you know, the background just like coming back together. Yeah. yeah. And and the voice of the mumbling just su- or the the kind of like the dumb pan, yeah. you know, uh, just the uh, uh. exactly. Really, you know, surprisingly, they got that in one take. <laughs> <laughs> you he, know. He was and then they just... passed out. <laughs> Those, two... <laughs> they were just... Those two have lungs of <laughs> Superman. <laughs> it was insane. It was nuts. I uh, I also want to ask you about your character development because we haven't given you the whole script yet. Right. So you're not quite oh. sure where everything is going for any of the interrogations or for anything. Right, just kind of... So you're assuming we know. <laughs> <laughs> Which we uh, do. No, we do. We do. No, we do. <laughs> Mostly. We have... <laughs> so episode 9 is written. Episode 10 is like a, a strong outline. <laughs> episode two, yeah. 11 strong. is a decent outline. And episode 12 is three, four sentences. Okay. And those three, four sentences are very good. Super yes. good. Yeah, killer. Super good. <laughs> they finish the story. So. Hey, every story ends with a sentence. Yeah. There it is. All on a napkin. Yeah. No, it, <laughs> it was, um, I don't, it, you know, it's I kind of exciting. that was pretty profound, yeah. Jordan. Yeah, that was good. <laughs> Sorry, was continue good. with it. Actually, <laughs> thank you for participating. Come in, it's come in Gary. Come in a little bit. I'm Sorry, need, I want to be able to see, see people. All right, I'll just look up this the people What's it like? This will be my island for you guys. So, come in. How are you today? Are you able to scoot in a little bit? I mean, kind of. Yeah, you be, well, scoot, you don't have to scoot in here. this way. You scoot in this toward me. To Always on, directing Justin. Well, <laughs> you're lo- we're cutting you off on the camera. Come on. Yeah, that's, that's better. Yeah, yeah, that's much go. better. Get, join you. the group, okay? Excellent. So, yes, yes. <laughs> and now we can't see Is that what you wanted? <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I'm oh, sorry. God. Oh, you're breaking Cousin everything. Arrugus. Colin, no. Yeah. <laughs> oh. oh. Okay. So while well, while well, you fix that, it's uh. it's kind of exciting to be perfectly honest, only because it's her. If you think about, you know, this woman in the world, she doesn't know into the future, even if she is a wizard, she doesn't know. It's true. So yeah. it's I get to build the character very organically, which is a treat for an actor. Mm. Sure. You know. So and you know, obviously, you've given me those little emotional ties to mm. remember while I'm interrogating everyone. Yes. So it's it kind of fuels like the. You know, like the shortness that she gets or like the eagerness and kind of like the the cutthroat nature of how, you know, you hear her in this episode and she's almost innocent. You know, mm-hmm. she's she's very sweet and mm. she, this is her day to day. But then, you know, she she goes through it. Yeah, her interrogations like sound a little different. Yeah. Sound, yeah, a little, they do. sound a little darker. Exactly. Yeah. So, oh, no spoilers. Oh, yes. No spoilers. Oh, great. Oh, great job. Oh. Great, great job. Yeah. <laughs> 
Well, because you can only do so much. It's it's funny. Like we write this stuff. We sit for hours in like a Denny's or on Justin's couch, and we write and we rewrite (laughs) and we argue and we write and we Mm -hmm. rewrite, and then we come up with this great idea. We're like, yes. And we go, how is Jordan going to make that sound no. and make that conversation make sense? <laughs> right. unless, unless we say everybody's yeah. name every time. Yeah. When we write yeah. this character, yeah, and we're like, that's so... a great idea. But like, what is, how is it going to sound when someone actually tries to say yeah. it? Yeah. Well, yeah. Re- re- con- rewriting is uh, just as much like cementing the story as it is making sure that how I write it makes sense for a person who's not watching it yeah. but is yeah. listening to mm-hmm. it. Yeah. So the, the visuals that are on every YouTube episode are just icing on the cake. You do not need them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so They're very good icing, by the way. Oh, yeah. they're amazing. No. The <laughs> artists on here are, like, are, are oh so God, into yeah. it. Uh, and I just contacted them saying I have the ed- ed- the episode edited, so let's get started with the art. And mm. I just give them a list of what they'd like to do, and then they let me know what they want to do. <laughs> Love that. So they're all on board. I think I got five. So yeah, that's so awesome. I just really appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. no, it's yeah. amazing. Just great job, artists. Woo-hoo. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> this camera has no emotions, but for everybody inside of it, we appreciate you. Yes. Really. Um, so let's get a little bit into the episode and kind of talk about uh, more of what was going on. Uh, and we'll kind of do chronologically. So this leads me into what I want to... In uh, the beginning. In the beginning. There was so there was this kid named there Severus was Snape. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it opens up and I, I, I wanted the, um, the werewolf attack to do two things. One, no transformations. We've seen that. Mm-hmm. Everyone expects that, mm-hmm. which means you don't do it. Um, and the other was, I wanted to be from Muggles' perspectives. Mm-hmm. Um, that was cool. Yeah, I, God, that. I have to say, the two Muggles in the beginning of the episode were very, very good. Yeah. Yeah, the yeah, conversation the was, was natural. So the girl was the great. The, the, <laughs> she, guy was, she pulled a lot of the weight in that whole acting yeah. conversation. She, she did. Yeah. She really did. She really did pull the weight. <laughs> yeah, the girl um, was great. The guy was... <laughs> I don't know if yeah. we could ever rehire both of them yeah. at the same time. I don't know. If yeah, there was she some on-set chemistry that they had. I thought there was kind of a screen test or an audio test, and it turned out really well and I think those two will have a, a larger role in the future. You think so? I, I don't know. I, I feel like they worked really well together and I, I think, yeah, you know, kismet. there was something about it. Really, they should yeah, be together. Yeah, They're a good yeah. power couple. They're a power, power, power couple. Yes, lots of power. <laughs> Garrett was no longer in Wizarding War Talks Back for some reason. He disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, we go. I, I want to talk, Jordan. I want you to tell me like your process figuring out this scene because yeah. I didn't just say wizarding fight. I didn't say it's like this is like you had to create figure out so much stuff from scratch. So mm-hmm. kind of go into like where you found some of these sounds, everything from the dogs barking to the wolf sounds, which didn't, didn't all sound wolf yeah. to like mm-hmm. the heavy galloping. I think that's my favorite part is that wolf galloping. sound. It was like, it was galloping and it weighed yeah. a ton. Yeah. I loved that. Yeah. So please t- tell me yeah. about your process. Well, the galloping was fun. I mean, that, that, that was a sound I'd spent a lot of time on actually. Cause I was going through my sound libraries and I just couldn't find the right big foot. So that's actually, three footsteps all in one and then I, you would only get one at a time and so you know you kind of want to make the gallop you know you you, you kind of hear how like a, a dog goes it's like so i had to take all those and to not, not make it sound repetitive i had to change up each individual foot stomp <laughs> Because yeah. if you just had the same exact sample, it would just be like dot 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 dot. You wouldn't get right. any of that, you know, natural the feeling of feel right. of the different foots on different, wouldn't you know, you pavement. It. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that actually took a really long time to do because I had to do it manually each individual thing, and he's galloping for a long time. So, so now we have details <laughs> on why this episode took so long. Exactly. Everybody. Wow. Oh yeah. It was. It was. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, that was a fun, you know, sound to create, but definitely very like as you know, yeah. that's a that was a hard part for sure. Just okay. you know, because uh, you know, and you listen to it so many times, you're like, all right, does that even sound good? I got to take a break for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so starting out with that, um, when I create sound design, uh, the best place to start is with the backgrounds and the um, actual foley. So so backgrounds are essentially. Um, and once you put start with the backgrounds, like it, it already feels much bigger because backgrounds are just you know so say they're they're at a they're at a cafe right or, yep. or something like that they're at a cafe yeah 
Um, so I add sounds of background noise of what a cafe would sound like, the, the atmosphere of a city outside the window, um, or, or uh, people talking you know, in the background. So you just add that as a bed, right? Start with that, then you can have somewhere to go from there when you actually want to move the characters around. So um, then it goes to footsteps and lots of um, you know, foley. So you know, all, the, all these noises, you mm-hmm. know. Um, and, uh, <laughs> every time I hear a shirt wrestle now, that's the picture in my oh, head. Oh, it's me. That's me just doing like this and like this and this. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Your poor yeah. roommates. Oh, yeah. It's great. It's <laughs> they so love it. It's cool, though. I mm. mean, you really, you just paint the world. Yeah. It's, yep. it's, it, you have to really, there's layers and layers and layers that you don't really think about, especially when you get a blank canvas. Sure. That's, that's, I mean, the most daunting thing. It was as blank as it was. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, I knew this one would take a while. Yeah. 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 You were like, you were like, I was like the end of their first scene, and then it was like werewolf. Right. You know, for like a minute. Werewolf <laughs> like, fight. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Have fun, Jordan. <laughs> no, I, I, I remember saying, I remember in the email, I'm like, take your time. Yeah. It's all right. Have fun. I, remember, I appreciate this is, that. This is what you like to do. <laughs> right. You love this. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah. And then, um, so from there, you get more of a picture of where things are moving. And this is where Justin's direction comes in, in handy, especially with this scene, is because there was so much empty space that I was, you know, making the characters move and do everything that they need to do. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, you know, having that direction, say, seeing, you know, he's like, all right, so then the werewolf blasts through the door and runs over to them, growls, you know, all that stuff. So it's, it makes it really literal for me, which helps a lot. So, mm-hmm. and with that, it's just thinking, it's like, okay, growl. Okay. Now I just got to go through my sound libraries and find what the right sound, you know? So wow. was yeah. there any character movement you found was the most in like enjoyable where you would like attached to moving this imaginary person you <laughs> yeah. created? You're like a couple of table yeah. six when they get up and run. Yeah. Like that's my favorite couple. They're on a date, mm-hmm. you know, it's their third <laughs> date. They have a backstory and yeah. everything. Is that how yeah. it yeah. Yeah. Gets? Oh yeah. No, uh, uh, but I did like the, um, uh, when the werewolf, ha- uh, uh, runs toward the couple and crashes through the window. Yeah. That was a kind of a fun one to think about because I had to try to pan the werewolf, um, you know, coming in at them and they were stage left um, and the window is kind of in the center. So I have them coming center and then uh, breaking through the glass. So that was a fun little move there. Cool. Uh, and yeah, the, yeah. he's referring, you're referring to how it would sound on headphones. Yeah, it's exactly. stereo. Yes, yeah. yeah so that's if you listen all... to this in stereo, you'll, yeah. you'll, it'll feel much more dynamic. You really yeah, need to it's listen true. to stereo, yeah. In a dark, <laughs> I do a lot of If you're Jordan of, listening in stereo <laughs> in a dark room, yeah. and yeah. with like 3,000 other headphones. And then the microphone and me just going. <laughs> <laughs> Looking exactly Crashing like cars that. under the first row. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. And what was yeah. the, um what were some of the wolf sounds? Yeah, yeah. So um the werewolf uh was um actually uh a combination of the I have a monster sound library, so actually I got really lucky and uh I just was able to use they they had like werewolf sounds, oh, but they yes. were a little too thin. So um with a lot of the growls and the roars, there's one certain roar where like right before he swipes at the um uh, the police car, uh, he, it, that's like a lion roar with a bit of a bear and then the, the werewolf, um, uh, little growl in there. So I love that the uh, monster library was too thin yeah. for the werewolf you wanted to create. You're oh like, yeah. No, I don't want to wet my pants no, it had, right now. He had, he had depth. He yeah. had, he had like weight to mm-hmm. his, yeah. to his sounding. I knew yeah. it wasn't just a wolf cause mm-hmm. wolves have like a snarl that yeah. is very distinct. It's, it's, and I was like, there's more than just a wolf here, mm-hmm. which is great because it's a werewolf and you can just go nuts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I did take a lot from the sound design from the movies, um, especially with the howl. Mm-hmm. The howl, I you definitely, because I heard that one in um, Prisoner of Azkaban. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, when, when, when Peter gets away. Right. Oh, man. I, oh, every time I time. watch it, I'm like, come on, just get him, get him this time. Just, it's gonna be, they're always so going to be different this they're time. Right. I know, It's going right? to be different. <laughs> It's like watching Titanic. You yeah. always hope it won't sink. Jack, come I back. always hope she'll never let go. <laughs> they almost got the gauntlet off. They almost got it off. God damn it, Quill. Yeah, that's my favorite part of Titanic. Uh, um, but yeah, um, what were we talking about? <laughs> the, the werewolf sound. Yes. yes. <laughs> oh, the werewolf sound. So that was that was uh, you know that was really fun to create. Um, uh, and then um, Sirius, um, I uh, actually used. Uh, fun fact: I used a Doberman. 
Um, yeah. There's a lot of dogs, and I was just going through them all, and then the Dobermans just sound, felt right sound to me, right. you know? Yeah. And the, you know, that was the only, I, I felt like I could have yeah. used some work because I have a Morky at home that has a very, <laughs> very distinct growl. Yeah. She's very, each, you know. You don't realize So it, I but... thought that she could have auditioned for it, but that's fine. I thought it would have been great. I understand my place in yeah. the <laughs> sound engineering, and uh, thought she did next time. okay. Next time. Yeah, right. Next yeah. time. <laughs> next time. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah. And uh, were there yeah. any were there any other little little fun little uh, uh, Easter eggs or secrets that you had like to get certain sounds the way you wanted to go? Um, um, it was really fun um, creating the uh, situation in which uh, I was able to go into the police car. Um, that one was really fun just because. Uh, there's little layers there and you might not even really realize it but you when you go in the car you, you feel like you're in the car right. so, That's so absolutely with yeah. that um you know uh uh first of all making the move into the car um mm-hmm. added some sound design effects of like going through a glass window um which actually i used the same one in um the first episode when they go through the window in uh, the in the and the menace and the and the, 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 uh, the uh, no, mungos same mungos that's, that's right yeah because yeah. 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 she like you know yeah. goes through the window uh-huh. and so uh-huh. I use the similar you know same kind of bass sound on that right um and then when you get in the car um uh at first you know I I just had the 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 vehicle turn on and the lights you know and you hear that all from the inside of the car. Uh, and then I added, um, you might even notice this one, but there's a uh, radio chatter, mm-hmm. um, underneath it, yep. which, uh, you know, it's just like, oh yeah, like that's it's when you go into radio. a car, like, either. cause you're moving locations and you don't see it. It's like, you're going to get so confused if you don't have like that immediate, like, radio where chatter. are we, where yeah, are we, as much as you, can. you know? Right. So all oh. those little details really added up, but, um, yeah, it was, it was fun to kind of be like, oh, like, what is it missing? What is it missing? Oh, like that? Yeah. That, what, what do I hear inside a police car? Like, yeah, right. radio chatter. And uh, I hope you didn't have to do, like, method research on this. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Can you come arrest me for yeah. just, like, five minutes? I need a, uh, yeah, I need, <laughs> just yeah. need a, I just want to ride around the block. <laughs> like, by the way, <laughs> oh, my gosh. badge. Yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's, aw- that's awesome, dude. Mm-hmm. It was amazing. Yeah, like, thank I, you. I was like, oh, I have to get him on the show. Like, He's <laughs> yeah. got to talk about yeah. this. I mean, you really are Dynamic. kind of an unsung hero because when you do your job well, nobody notices. <laughs> yeah, I feel like, exactly. like the radio plays. You Audio really engineer. notice. You need it. But yeah. like when it's there, this is different from picture. Picture like a sound to match it, so no mm-hmm. one, you don't notice. I feel like you can get away with. Uh, uh, semi, uh, you can get away with issues in your picture on a movie. Mm. Mm. You know, you can have little stuff that doesn't quite look right. But if anything sounds not right, yeah, it's, you're, that's you're, the you're, first you're, thing. You're taken oh, out. Yeah, so you're taken oh, out. But, yeah. So like, you do your job <laughs> in the movie, no one notices. Yep. But this is different because you're just listening. Mm. Yeah. Your brain's focusing only on the sound. So I think it's not like. You do your job, Jordan, and no one notices. I think we're all noticing. <laughs> yeah. I feel like does it give it's you okay, kind of a <laughs> realm to play in a little bit more because yeah. you don't have to watch something and be like, "Well, I got to do that." You know, it's so funny that you mentioned that though. It, it's it's actually a little bit of the op- just opposite, just for me mm. personally. I I think uh, you know this is my first foray into the the radio play, and I'm used to being able to see it, and I can again just be very literal mm-hmm. and it helps my creative juices when i'm like oh i see like this is happening here like yeah. you know in this situation I, that's i had a lot of struggles actually getting through mm. because it's it's i'm just unsure i'm like i'm not seeing this i have to make it up in my head right. mm. but um it's a great exercise i mean i feel like i'm a lot better at it now but you know right. starting off this one with the blank i was just like all I got is Justin's, you know, direction. And <laughs> Justin's I'm just like, email. Yeah, hey, I'm like, we go, so we all righty, <laughs> how do I do this? Right. Well, <laughs> thanks for taking up the challenge. No, you do, it was, you do a I really mean, good job. Yeah. It feels good, you know, when you... Episode 5 is going to be a little bit more chill. Yeah. So you should be able to get through that one. <laughs> yeah, we're going right. into space in episode 7. Oh, so yeah. that will be an absence well, of sound. Well, that's easy. Marauders in space. So easy. Oh, wow. <laughs> the original wow. idea. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> yeah, episode 5 is going to be a little bit more chill. And then in later episodes we get... I don't think we'll ever get nearly as... Um, 
like from scratch crazy as that werewolf fight. But the, we're Never gonna get dynamic. Ever. We're gonna get dynamic in different ways. Yeah, I can't so. wait for more wizarding fights. Yes, and what, I have oh, a lot of coming. spells. Oh, yes. I have a lot oh, of spells. Oh, I that will use. happen. <laughs> awesome, that's coming. We did a lot of yelling, random sounds <laughs> yep. uh, the last time we recorded. So yes. the wizarding oh, yeah. fights are happening. Oh, that was so much fun. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What's your favorite part of, of recording in the big studio space? Aside from obviously performing and doing a great job. I, you know, it's funny on my resume, I have this special skill that I can bark like a dog. And, you know, it's mm-hmm. always one of those things where every casting director is like, you can bark like a dog. That's so funny. I'd love to see that one day next. Mm-hmm. But I actually got to like bark like a dog for like our background fully. And yeah. I was just like, man, no one's ever going to appreciate this. <laughs> this is great. And then, of course, we all just like ran in groups you know but it was i don't know it's just fun because you get to create your little imaginary world of why you're freaking out right now man if you want we can send you a clip of you barking like a dog so you can just play it for your casting directors Mm -hmm. it's very good it's very 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 convincing yes it's so much fun i'm so weird (laughs) yeah we're all weird perfect what are we doing i'm very normal thank Mm -hmm. you very much look at what we're doing (laughs) we're weird um we're weird (laughs) So, <laughs> so I'm like doing this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so Garrett, uh-huh. talk to me about the uh, about that uh, that wonderful scene that we had to hear mm. after yes. uh, James's parents getting the news. Oh. Tell me about tell me about how you got there, how you got to that point, because that was really impressive on the day. I had you scream a few times. You did. Mm. There was yes. there was not a was not a one scream and done scream. Yeah. No. <laughs> Uh, I'm primarily a comedy actor, so it was very difficult. Uh, I had a fart joke at the end that I was going to lay in, and I didn't. I just let it slip quietly away. James, uh, stop it! Was that a fart joke too? <laughs> Thank you, Jordan. I got it. Uh, no, in all seriousness, like it, I couldn't have done it without the my parents in that scene. They were the performances of both of the actors were fantastic, mm-hmm. and it was like yeah, you guys and really scene. dropped in. Yeah, I mean, mm. they did a fantastic job. It was like. I almost had to do no work, if that makes any sense. Hmm. I mostly just had to listen to what they were telling me. Hmm. Yeah, and it brought just, out just the perfect thing. Just because I had Bo on one side and Francine on the other side, and they were both just looking at me. Yeah. and We did that a lot. Well, yeah, because in the... We, we, we placed the, the actors next to each other. Yeah, because in the working. studio mm-hmm. space that we're so lucky to be working with, the sound booths they have are like these big panels and in the middle is a plexiglass sort of window that you can look through and and perform with the people in your scene and and uh, that was a lifesaver man because i'm i was very much dreading doing that when i got Mm. in on Mm. the day i was like oh this is gonna be a rough day Mm. it's interesting because you guys uh everybody uh with the exception of a few people are stage and camera actors yeah so like you're not used to like talking to each other without looking at each other and i noticed you guys would often insist like can i stand next to this guy because I mean, and you guys yeah. like turn your mic and look at each other and that's not necessary obviously but you do it because it helps your performance and i find that interesting yeah you know i think it's it's one of those things where you can do as much preparation work as you want but one, once the red light is on it's all about being right there and just experiencing as as it happens and yeah. so i just can't thank bo and francine enough for making me feel safe enough to to do that mm. and being vulnerable enough with me to do it uh because their their part it's that's not easy and i used that to get to where i was going and you know there's a lot of different acting techniques that you can use i um i used a lot of um as ifs and mm-hmm. emotional replacement yeah. With with them and my mm. my own family and things that I've been through and things that I fear I never have to go through and yeah, mm. that's always rough because it takes time to deal with afterwards. It costs mm. you something. Sure. Mm. Um, and I had to go sit outside for a little bit after it was done, which just sounds so stupid and dramatic, <laughs> but it's the no, truth. Yeah. Yeah. That's chemicals. the way that actors get in good yeah. performances. Is I that mean, they have to dig into themselves and they have to use real emotions, which yeah, like you said, yeah. creates those chemicals and it just draw it. It drains you. Yeah, you can't drop that. Oof. I think I think the best piece of advice I was given is that creating a character isn't putting on a coat. It's mm. opening up your vest to show people what you're wearing. Mm. You know what I mean? It's it's not something you hide with it's something you reveal with yeah, yeah. and Good the yeah the truth is that i finished that scene and 
I didn't really care if it was good or if it was bad. I think I just finished it and was happy that the truth got out. Yeah. Mm. And the moment had happened, and I feel like I honored the people in it that I was using and the moment in the story. Yeah. So. Well, I cared if it was good or bad. Yeah. That's that's your job. <laughs> yeah. That's your job. And yeah. I think a lot of actors can get stuck. I can get stuck trying to direct myself mm. when right, I go, that's my is job. this good or yeah. bad? But it's yeah. not my job. At the and end I, of the day, I, it's not my job. Right. And I, I've worked with actors where they're just like, I don't feel like I'm giving you the performance. I'm like, well, then that's on me. Yeah. I need to figure out how to get you there. Yeah. Like, otherwise, it's like the... It's, this sounds harsh, but it's like once you're cast, it's up to me to get to get get you where you need to be. Mm-hmm. If you can't, it's my fault because I shouldn't have cast you. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. Taking yes. the fall, but it's and I mean that, that happens all the time. Like, mm-hmm. it, um, I do the best I can to cast the right people, um, but uh, very often I'll see very talented actors where I'm just like, you're not the right person for the part. Yeah, you're good, but you're not the right person. And that's where the real uh, game of trying to make a living in this town is, is that I see so many talented people still struggle because they're just not in the right, they're not the right peg for this hole. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and well, it's that, almost like they just can't take the story from out of your brain and into theirs. Mm-hmm. So that it yeah. internalizes almost. That's true. But also as a director, I don't, I, I have to learn to let go of what I hear in my head or see in my head. Okay. And I have to let... Um, I have to trust that the actor understands what the bigger story is for their character and for the story in general. Right. And very often I'll get better performances yeah. than I had in my head because I'm just like, they understand it in a way that they perform that is absolutely correct for the character. Yeah. Not what I heard in my head, but that's never going to happen. Right. Well, and like, that's just you casting or, it perfectly. Mm hmm. Casting it well. Perfect is, perfect is a word I don't like to use. Perfect is a dangerous word in this industry. Um, but yeah, I mean, I knew you were going to do great at that. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I appreciate that. Um, but like my main thing with this moment for James uh, is, is I knew his parents passed away, but up until Pottermore talked about how. I wasn't sure how it was, what I was going to do as to how they were going to die. Mm. And I wasn't sure that was going to be part of the story until I heard how they died, which is dragon pox, which is a chronic disease that slowly kills you. Yep. And I was like, perfect. And it's thank this you, is, JK is, Rowling. Is, yeah, yeah, thank you, JK Rowling. Yeah. That's why it's, it's kind of funny when people make comments about like, uh, Severus Snape and the Marauders, like, why do you not like James? I'm like, I don't dislike mm-hmm. James. It's not a personal bias. This is the way he was written. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, oh, but there's like, there's he gets better. I'm like, there's one person that says he gets better, and I believe he gets better, but there's no details. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So all I'm doing is filling in details. Mm-hmm. And then and then I got another comment of this person who's like has a bias against James, saying, "Damn it, you're making me like him." Mm-hmm. And I'm like, it's a character arc. People. <laughs> <laughs> this is, it's, it's like, I, it's, it's not like or dislike. I just see his purpose in the story. That he had immaturities and maturities and this is story is about how those weaknesses of his are changed and fixed and how he grows mm. yeah. so um the uh revelation that the potters have dragon pox was to me it's perfect because mm-hmm. he has he has to deal with that fallout he has to come to terms with it mm-hmm. he has to make choices based on that and then we have to see how those choices build into him joining the order of the phoenix so when i heard that i was like that is it's perfect. It's exactly what James needs yeah. as far as character growth. Yeah, right. absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. And I think uh, I think it's a very brave thing for you to have in this because it, it has a it can be done so poorly mm-hmm. where it would come off as like this we're just using it as this like character crowbar thing of like they've got dragon pox mm-hmm. now what are you going to do? Right. But yeah. I think right. the way that you, really well you put it in there is like very realistic. Well, it also helped me uh, give a reason as to why they don't join the order yet. Mm-hmm. Um, I was just like, these guys need to like be further broken down. Yeah, they got their asses kicked, but they can just get back up and be like, hunk, gung-ho, whatever. I'm like, no, 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 no. They're going to have emotional issues over being beaten by their rival. They're going to have emotional issues about dealing with each other, about Peter's betrayal, about, about James's revelation, about uh, Remus turning to a werewolf. I'm like, these are all things that help separate them. So their their eventual uh, reunification, spoilers, um, 
The Marauders uh, get back together? Yeah. Crazy. What? Um, they That's not the story I'm writing. But it becomes more satisfying. Yeah, you, agreed. you root for them. You're like, I want them to come back together. And they will. We get to see how. Mm-hmm. But uh, James's revelation with his parents, as well as all the other characters' issues, are reasons for them to stay separated and then come back together later so we can have a longer series. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, I also love about that moment. It, you know, it, it also comes where they even talk about Lily and how he was going to propose to her. And yeah. I, it, that yeah. Uh, all of the everything you together. Butthead. It makes it so you gave it human. away in one of the talks backs. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. I had to play so, it off. I had to play it off like it was an idea. Uh, <laughs> it was a character motivation. Right. Uh, listen. <laughs> You're telling me I say things that I shouldn't say. <laughs> we need to talk about it beforehand. Yeah. I mean, I, I did. Well, but it's such like a... Okay. Anakin becomes Darth Vader. <laughs> what? Well, yeah. I know. You know but I, I, mean? like, like, I wanted Snape it kills to... Dumbledore. Right. I, this wasn't even... This was in a panel. I remember this moment. This oh, really? was in a panel because they asked me, how did you build this character? And I was like, well, here's all the things that I'd be dealing with. And I was like, I w- imagine yeah. that after school, someone who thinks he has his head screwed on so straight right. is going to propose to this woman he wants to marry. Right. But he doesn't because he gets his ass kicked on the right. day he's going to propose to his future wife, which right. makes the stakes so much higher. Exactly. Right. Yeah. You know, and it's so, so lifelike. Everything bad always, like everything just happens all at once. You know, if like you'll get fired from your job and then pop a tire as you're driving yeah. away, you know, right. it's like yeah. Yeah. Murphy's Law. Very oh. Love so it. It, it was it was perfect and the hurricane in it oh my <laughs> god like the glass breaking and swirling and even in the background when you can hear it like tinking itself back yeah. together it's so beautifully crafted james is powerful man yeah, Just yeah. uncontrolled there but that's, that's like raw magical anger there right that's what i loved about it it's like that part of the harry potter universe you know that like yeah. young kids can do crazy things and mm-hmm anger and like emotions can fuel your magic like i think that's fantastic yeah. i feel like that's getting more explored now in like mm. fantastic beasts and yeah. everything of how because not kids aren't credence. the only people who get angry right yeah, yeah with know. credence yeah so i think yeah. that's really cool and and just a part that you don't get a read because i mean the harry potter books are kid, the books about like young adults going yeah. to school and growing yeah. up Right. So you don't and other deal than with blowing up your aunt into right. the giant balloon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's like, another emotional, like, yeah. holy crap thing. Yeah, yeah. Like, like one of the things I loved uh, is that even as babies, they can they have magical abilities. Yeah. Like yeah. when Neville was, oh when Neville was accually thrown out of a he window, he bounced. bounced. <laughs> when, oh, when, Harry, wow. when Harry's hair was cut terribly, it regrew back. Yes. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I forgot. But about then, as that. you get older, your magic matures as well. Yes. yes. And yes. you can create hurricanes in your house or giant wraiths that will kill people. Yeah. yeah. The original um, inspiration for that was uh, whenever Ron was stressed out, he would it would snow around him, and I was just like, what if <gasps> oh, like yeah. it was taken to the extreme? Yeah. And he like and just someone loses it, and I was that's where the weather came yeah. in because mm-hmm. like wow. there was a moment in the Deathly Hallows where Voldemort just explodes with magic after he watches Bellatrix get killed oh. um, and I was like yeah I want that but I need it to be like something like not just a big like boom and their house is blown up <laughs> That's how their house got blown up. <laughs> right. The Potters didn't die from yeah. billion bucks. Yeah. James blew them up. Oh right. boy. <laughs> That'd be a whole um, other story. Yeah. Well, that's, oh. that's the oh. that's the Ariana story. That's the Ariana Dumbledore story. Yeah. Right. That's, exactly. That's what happened there. Yeah. But um, no, I just, that, that that was the original idea. Is that uh, uh, I wanted it to be weather on an ex- mm-hmm. on an extreme scale. Well, yeah. I appreciated the sound engineering on that because it listening to it I, I hoped that because it, it goes from very quiet to very loud mm-hmm. you know just and on camera it would look much more yeah, like you have an art grown yeah and i really appreciated kind of how you did that with the subtle winds in the background yeah. you yeah. really conveyed what my face was doing without me having to be there doing it <laughs> i right. saw it in my so head <laughs> that was thank you for doing that yeah yeah i mean that was a lot with justin too because we went back and forth a couple times on that actually and i had Sometimes actually the first iteration of it, it was a lot less. It was a little more dramatic of a, of a zero to 100. And, uh, then, you know, Justin came back with some notes and he was like, we need this to like build more. We need more like little wispy winds at the beginning to actually establish that like, okay, this is wind going not, not Mm -hmm. just in, so it was originally more of an earthquake sound. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I was like, oh, yeah, right. It's wind. Yes, I get it. Yeah. Yeah. So that was a credit where it's due. Mick was, uh, Mick Ignis, uh, gave me that note um, oh good because nice. what i i have a policy i finish editing it 
um, I send it to you, mm -hmm. and when I'm satisfied enough with the sound design, I send it to Garrett and Mick, and they mm -hmm. give me notes. Got it. Um, Love it. Because Garrett's co-writer and Mick is producer, and I want and I want their outside opinions. But I only do it once because if I go back and forth and back and forth, then it's not gonna. Yeah. Happen. And then I yeah. argue about like small sounds. <laughs> right. And, like, and it's just. I not think necessary. we need a side story about yeah. just Dobby. <laughs> right. We need. The, yeah. It just saves in the background. Way, you know, it's yeah. way too much stuff. <laughs> yeah. Which actually comes from TV. Um, they have a policy where it's uh, the editor gets a cut. Uh, yeah, the director gets a cut, and then the producers get a cut, mm -hmm. and then they have to they have to air it. Yes, yeah. they have to get it out. They only have yeah, like a week. Has to be finished. Yeah. yeah, they have to get it out in a certain period of time. Yeah. So, um, and let's see. Uh, I really loved that, and I remember we did a few takes uh, with Bo and uh, uh, Francine and you a after the fact, mm. and they just have this kind of like laughing, crying. Oh, moment. I know. And oh. I just it, it got me in the feels every time yeah. I was editing it. And that was just just props to all three of you for just having a fantastic little moment. Yeah, it was a great. Was it was good. a great. Thank you for. Uh, thank you. Yeah, I appreciate that. Was that. Great. I like that. One. It was it was tough to record, but so rewarding. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just the three of us hugged afterwards. And yeah, it was just like, oh, God, you yeah. guys. They look like your parents. Huh? Too. I mean, <laughs> yeah, and just the sound like ah. Uh, Francine breaks my heart every she time does. she talks. I, I know. Like, oh my god! And I love That's credit so to Alex voice. as well. Like the hopeful tone That's, at the end. Yes. It's, just, it's like it's a song of clouds clearing after mm -hmm. a rainy day. Yeah, you know, it's just Good. like no, uh, that's a great description. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Alex. You're welcome, there. Alex. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, you know, it's very hopeful, and they really brought they really brought their heart and soul to it. All three of us did. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, you did. God, it was so fun to record and so exhausting, but yeah. it was so worth it. Yep. That's what it's all about. Mm. And then we have the final uh, moment with uh, snoring serious, mm. um, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> waking up and getting that letter. Um, I loved how the sound of the uh, of, of Remus's voice was engineered to sound like it was coming off the paper, mm -hmm. which was yeah. really fun. Yeah, another thing I stole, but you know. Yeah, hey, I mean, <laughs> I didn't come up with the as if. I promise yeah. you, <laughs> I steal as Just well. Just great artist steal, right? That's yeah. what you say. <laughs> well, you steal without getting noticed. Yeah, oh, that's, what? that's what it is. I just gave myself away. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. Run away quick. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was... Uh, I'm running away. <laughs> I think it was Kanye West who said that. He said it's... Uh, Uh-oh. Uh, oh, you should have stolen that yeah. from him. Not great, great, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> great art. Great artists. Uh, great artists steal. Uh, the, the, the way to... The, the, the best way to steal is to steal without getting noticed. Yeah. <laughs> um, he also said, uh, reach for the stars. So if you fall, you land in the clouds. Yeah. And... Didn't he also like wear Trump hats and all yeah. kinds of stuff? Yeah, he's also insane. <laughs> yeah, he's, yeah. He also says something about dragon energy. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I don't know. Tap dancing on a fine line. <laughs> Genius it's and true. crazy. <laughs> Look, he makes no sense, but he makes dollars. Yeah. yeah. Boo. Wow. <laughs> Boo. Where's my mob? That was punny and I hated it. Oh, I hated it. Go to a penitentiary uh, for your punishment. Oh, oh, I haven't heard that one snap. ever. Snap. You wow. just got admitted, bro. Oh, to the penitentiary. Sign the papers. I'm taking that one home. God, this, is, <laughs> this is like season three of The Punisher right here. Hey, Where's yeah. Zach? Oh, damn. I know, right? He's probably just when he listens to this, he's like, "Oh, that's, <laughs> that's like, when Zach it. quits." That's they, the they day. They could have done better. Yeah. They could have done so much better. Done better. I can't wait to have Zach on. It's gonna be a while mm. until we have Zach on. Are we having him on? Oh yeah. Oh, I thought we were just gonna. No, not. there's a, there's like an episode. <laughs> Completely. He's just gone. That's nice. nice. <laughs> sorry, 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 sorry. There are a few fan fictions where Peter just doesn't exist, and I'm uh, just like, come on, really? Come on, guys. We don't he's like him, integral. so he's not in it. I so. think Zach did a great. I love that we're now yeah. talking about Zach, who's not here. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, <laughs> but I think he did a great job making yeah. Peter likable. He's oh, got yeah. he's got pet groupies. Yep. Oh, groupies. yeah. Wow. God, okay. Yes. I almost said. Oh, you haven't heard that one before, huh? No. No, you have. Yeah, me too. I'm sorry. It's okay. I take full responsibility for everything. <laughs> no, I think, I think that was Danny to. who came up with that. It was a reaction. Well, it probably was. It was a reaction video. And then Mick <laughs> says, you, you're probably going to make the very first P Peter Pettigrew fans. And she goes, Pettigroupies. Oh, yes. man. Yeah. That's oh, man. Danny. Unchained genius. <laughs> yes. What, what death has your genius uh, wrought? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> death by pun. Did you guys get stuff done on these talkbacks? Yeah, yeah, we yeah, just, right. we talked about yeah, stuff. Yeah, just little. Stuff we punned for like six minutes, mm -hmm. but yeah. We're a very punny group. Yeah. Uh, anything else? 
Blub? Mm, you know, yeah, blub? I had blub. Uh, yeah. I was going to think of a pun, a table pun, but I was yeah. like, no, what? <laughs> no. I guess I'm oh, well. still building it. Yeah. Well, I think we're pun here for the day. Uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> the end of the episode ended so abruptly after out, the questions were done. <laughs> Thanks for joining the great... <laughs> <laughs> oh, the Sopranos. <laughs> 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 that reference is old. Yeah. It is very old. Wow, is it really that it's old? It's old. Oh, I'm old. Yeah. Yes. Oh, One would say that you have control of the whole thing. Mm. I don't know if that was a good <laughs> mob <laughs> pun. I don't know how that... All right. Well, thanks for joining us, guys. I hope you had fun. And uh, Jordan, I finished editing episode five. I'm going to get you started. Yeah! So you're not allowed to go home because you're editing episode I'm five here. literally going That's right. Right here into yeah. the computer. Wizarding yeah. War talks <laughs> back. <laughs> Peace. Hi. Give us some foley. Give us some credits. Oh, yeah. Here we go. I'll walk out. Here we go. Ready? I'm walking out. Bye, Jordan. Bye. Bye. That's the door. Closing. No, I got it. You're, <laughs> You're outside. And cut. <laughs>